everyone, and welcome back to Imagine Marie, or welcome if you're new. Today, for the first time in like three years, I'm happy to be bringing you guys a tutorial. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to make prop brushes on Procreate. So these are like awesome, whether you're working on a comic or you just want to be more efficient in your art. Just having like a brush where you can like automatically draw in something that you've already created instead of having to redraw a million books, for example, in each panel of your comic. It just makes things way more efficient. So today I'll be showing you guys how to draw a book brush and then also one of those brushes where you just, yeah, you pick a shape and then that's your brush. <laughs> All right, so the canvas that I'm using is 1500 by 1900 pixels. Um, that might not be important to you, but the brush thing is a bit finicky I've found in my trial and error. And it kind of depends on how big your canvas is, if it actually is going to work. So that's what I recommend. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my settings. I'm going to go to canvas, drawing guide, edit, and I'm going to make sure it's on the 2D grid and that assisted drawing is on. Because the first thing I'm going to do is just draw my bookshelf. So next I'm going to turn on symmetry because the key to this is to make it look like it's repeating. So I'm just going to draw in a book. It doesn't need to be perfect, or at least mine doesn't, haha, <laughs> because I'm just doing an example. Okay, um, anyway, I'll draw in a book like that from the front, kind of, and over here and over here. Wow, that's a terrible arrow. These are identical. So when they're beside each other, they're gonna look like just one book. All right, so now I'm gonna draw in the rest of my books and I'm just going to use 2D grid to make them straight lines. And this is just gonna be a rough template that I'll fill in afterwards with more details. All right, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna turn off my drawing guide so that I can draw a non-straight, whoa, that didn't. Okay, I'm turning off drawing assist so that I can draw some non-straight lines to give these books some depth. And now they're kind of looking like a bunch of books on a bookshelf. You can add more variety if you want as well. Um, like in the other bookshelves that I've made, I have some books leaning over. Or in my other book brush, I have some books piled on their sides. Make it unique. Make it, you know, however you want, obviously. Your brush, your rules. All right, anyway, I'll finish these ones. And now I'm going to go back in and add some more detail. So I'm gonna start on a new layer and I'm actually just going to lower the stabilization on this brush just to make things a bit more interesting instead of all uniform and boring. And, oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna want to make this book symmetrical with its partner on the other side there, so I'm going to turn drawing guide back on, turn on symmetry, turn on drawing assist, and there we go. Now I'll draw this book in. And as you can see, it's copied exactly on the other side. So when our brush is completed, it'll look like one straight line of books. So I'm just going to add some like hatching for detail. And I'll add a stripe like that, because why not? And now that book's done, so I can turn off the symmetry assist and just go back to filling in the details for all of the other books. Alright, so now I'm just going to add some details to the spines. Um, I'm just adding some hatching to make it a bit more interesting. These books look very messy, but you know what? That kind of works with my art style, so it's fine. But yeah, definitely make your books, you know, unique. 
but one tip is to not make them stand out too much or else it'll just be like blatantly obvious that they're just repeated over and over again. That's actually why I made two different book brushes so that I could change them out for a bit more variety. But definitely works really well as just a quick background shot where you just need to have some books in the background but it doesn't really matter what they look like. Okay, so now that we've got our books done, I'm just going to turn off the sketch layer that I used before, and we've got our books. Okay, so this next step is kind of weird, but through trial and error I've realized that for some reason it's the only way you can get the brushes to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my background color. Oh my gosh. Um, ignore that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn off my background color, and I'm going to turn on alpha lock. And I'm going to paint everything I just drew white. So you could just paint bucket all of this white, but since I have a lot of little details, that probably won't work for me. So I'm just going to go over to a bigger brush and I think I had, yeah, I'm going to turn down its stabilization just so it's easier to fill everything in really quick. And make sure you get everything in white or else it's just not going to show up in the brush. And there, okay, now that everything is white, um, we don't need alpha lock anymore, but what we do is we're going to copy this layer. And now we can finally get into making our brush. So click on brushes and click on the plus sign. Alright, so now go down to where it says grain. And beside grain source, hit edit and import, paste. And there are our books. So now we're going to click on auto repeat. And as you can see, there's this weird blurry thing where the books intersect. And it looks bad, obviously, so we're going to go to border overlap and just turn it down until it starts to look normal. And there we go! As you can see, it just looks like one straight repeating line of books, which is exactly what we wanted with that symmetry tool. So now the last thing I'm going to do, and this is more of a preference thing, because I don't know a lot about making Procreate brushes, but for whatever reason, um, the opacity depends on pressure when you're making these brushes, so I'm going to go over to rendering and I'm gonna go to light glaze and this just makes everything a lot less like for some reason in the past when I was making these brushes the line thickness would be just so thick that it would erase all of the details I had made so anyways light glaze avoids that problem for you so now the last thing if you want you can go down to about this brush and click on untitled brush at the top here to name it whatever you want Alright, so that's the finished brush. Let's click done. And let's take a look at what we made. So I'll turn the background color back on, open a new layer, and just turn it to black. And there are our books. So they automatically appear in these rows like this when you're just coloring all over. And you can like add multiple rows if you want, like that. And boom, you just made a bunch of books. This looks like it would have taken me, oh my gosh, taken. This would have taken me like five hours to draw or something like that. But anyways, I had a brush, so it was super duper fast. All right, and now getting into the reason why there was a giant among us on my screen earlier, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these brushes where at first glance, it's a normal brush, but then you just click it once and it's whatever you want it to be. So I'm just on the same size canvas as before, but this time, um, the process will go a bit differently. So draw any shape you want. Um, I'm just going to draw maybe a star um, and fill up as much. This is a terrible start. Fill up as much as fill up as much of the canvas as you can with your shape. This will just make it easier um, to see when it's a brush. And yeah, ignore my terrible star. And you're going to do the same thing for this. You're actually going to color everything in white. So I'll turn off my background so that you can see it. And it's white now. And we're just going to copy this layer and go back into brushes and click new brush. And this time, instead of going to grain, we're going to go to shape. And beside shape source, hit edit, import, paste. And there's my star. All right. And that's it. Now you have a brush that's whatever you want it to be.
Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I really enjoy making advice videos, but I never know what to make them about. So if there's any other, you know, tips or tricks on Procreate or about digital art, about comic making, anything you guys want to see in a video from me, let me know in the comments and I will for sure get on that. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.